Angular v20 is here, and after so many releases with big new features and changes, many people might be relieved to see that this release is actually pretty boring. But it's boring in a good way. There is a lot to this release, but most of the key stuff is the stabilization of a bunch of the experimental new features and some minor changes. So let's do a quick overview of the key things in this release. And first of all, if you're wondering about the theoretical selectless components that we saw recently, this feature is still in the super early stages and will not be a part of the V20 release. And perhaps the most significant change in this release is a slight update to the resource APIs to have more intuitive naming based on feedback from the RFC. However, these resource APIs will still remain in the experimental phase for now and are not considered stable. Signal APIs that are being promoted to stable though are effect, linked signal, to signal, to observable, and these render hooks will now also be stable with the caveat that after render will be renamed to after every render, which is to help highlight that this is a hook that will run frequently and should generally be avoided. An important change to keep in mind on the testing side of things is that flush effects is being removed with the guidance that tick should be used instead. However, there are some important things to keep in mind around this change, and I'll link to a great blog post in the description that goes into detail on this topic. Then we also have some SSR stuff being stabilized, like incremental hydration and server route APIs, and some general quality of life improvements, a particular big one being that type checking is now available on host bindings. And speaking of things being updated and improved, I've also just finished a major upgrade to my Angular course, not only to get it ready for V20, but it has also been completely rebuilt with Astro and Angular with some major improvements. My favorite being that the entire course is now easily searchable for easy reference, and there is also a dark mode now too. It'll be on sale for the 48 hours after this video goes live. So feel free to check it out if you're interested in a course that focuses on a modern and declarative approach to Angular development. So we've still got a ways to go before this Angular renaissance is truly realized, and we're likely to keep seeing more features dripped out over time, like the selectless components and signal forms. Whilst this in-between stage is somewhat painful and awkward, this slow migration is probably still better than the approach that has been used in the past for modernizing the framework, and at least in my opinion, certainly better than not adapting over time at all. If you'd like to leave a like or subscribe before you go, that would be greatly appreciated, and I hope to see you back here again for more videos.